Welcome to Seat Time, where we drink beer and talk about all the happenings with motorcycles. Welcome to Seat Time, everybody. This is episode 53. We're calling it old school because we have all gone back to paper. Look at this, handwritten notes. I even just tried to call Jason Hooper to see what else was going on from Digital Off-Road. we got to figure stuff out. Make it happen. <laughs> so one of the things that did happen this past weekend was Toronto Supercross. I didn't get a chance uh, to ride, so I didn't do any of this. It was more like putting crap away from my garage. It was sucked. Working the working the DVR <laughs> later on. Hey, it's what happens to the best of us, right? Okay, so Toronto, though, I actually heard from uh, Brian Story, our good buddy over at SMS, that his team actually did really, really good. Uh, you got more on that? Yeah, dude. Our, uh, the SMS team just absolutely killed it. Um, our uh, number one rider, Shane Sewell, uh, the 68 guy, he, uh, he, uh, put it down in the first, uh, in the first he got qualifier. Ninth and made it straight to the main, didn't Yeah, he? and he got a little bit of seat, seat, of, uh, TV time there. Yeah, after he needs to get some more seat time, though. Yeah, he needs some more seat, yeah, he almost said it. But, you know, he got a whip over the finish line, that was cool. Um, Jeremy Huddleston. Yep. Was another one of the SMS, uh, violation riders, and, uh. He, uh, he, uh, made the night show for the first time in his life, so this is a career best for him. Heck and, yeah. He, uh, he got 16th in this qualifier, and, and uh, I think he dropped out of the LCQ, but uh, that was really cool for him, and, uh, and you know, it was really great for the for the whole team. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, how did Lepanovich do? I'm not for sure. I think he got, like, I think 16th or 17th in the second. He, but he made it to the night uh, show as well? Yeah, yeah, he made it to the night show, you know, so he was running fast right. times, but, you know, he... Couldn't really push it, you know. He's still, he's still dealing. Still kind of recovering from that broken collarbone. Yep, the collarbone. Yeah. Happens so. to the best of us. But man. It, but it's cool, you know. So out of forty guys, SMS had three guys. So you know, I don't know what that. I don't do math, but that to. sounds it's like eight like percent or something of the of the crowd. I'm pretty sure if we pulled out a calculator yeah, right now, it would not be eight percent. No, but, but a big chunk of it. Was I'm like certainly not going to call you out because I don't know the answer either. I'm stick with seventeen percent. But the big thing I think <laughs> is that the fact that the track looked fun it was a little rutted out. Um, I, they mentioned that the fact that they used different dirt or something. Yeah. That maybe the moisture has been different. It still looked pretty gnarly to me. Canadian soils, different. Yeah. It's not, I don't hmm. know what's different That's, that's it. math. That's science right there. That's, that's geology, is. dude. Completely <laughs> wrong. It's, it's <laughs> totally <laughs> science. It's no. totally science. Um, so, but, I mean, coming down to the night, when it, it, the big thing was that Ryan Villapoto had some competition, but then once he really, it was kind of that deal, it's like, the, everybody could stay with him until yeah, everybody he, made that one mistake, and then he was able to just put six seconds, and then he was able to put more, and then yeah, he was able to win. Was, <laughs> yeah, that was you know at least they kept him in check a little bit, you know. But you know, every, but James being out, you know Trey Kennard, who we just talked to, yeah. being out, you know all the all the heavy hitters, of Chad Reed, just. You know, we got no competition. Yeah. Kind of oh, guy. dude. Okay. Well, let's screw all this stuff. Ben Townley, CR two two yeah, motorsports. Yeah. Be completely honest. What do you think about that for motocross? Man, I I think that uh, the Aussie New Zealand you know guys they stick together. That's what I think. I I'll be completely <laughs> honest. I think it's the worst business decision ever. Really? Yeah. Really? I think that Ben Townley can totally ride and totally can perform, but I don't think he can do it consistently. And yeah, I that's I, true. I just I. I, I honestly am like I'm, v- I'm very surprised that Chad Reed went with somebody that's inconsistent, volatile, and not a finisher, even though he's a good <laughs> finisher when he does finish. Over the fact of getting somebody in there that's gonna put their name up in a consistent position every time. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, if you look back to how Chad Reed was before he was a team owner, he was all of those things. He mm-hmm. was he was gonna put it out there and see what happened, and he was always gonna put it out there for the win. And I think that with his money right now, that's where he's at. He's putting it out there to win. You know, he he doesn't want, obviously, Townley to get hurt or anything like that or to not finish. But if he does finish, he wants him to be up top. And I think that that's kind of where his, you know, his betting money is right now. Yeah, I mean, Tally definitely has a whole lot of talent. But you're right. You know, he's got struggles with that consistency. And ever since 2007, when he won the outdoor championship, yep. that uh, he hasn't been, he hasn't quite put it, Put uh put all the cards together, yep. you know. And but uh, that's a mosquito. I'm okay with being proved completely wrong because I've never like you know <laughs> that's awesome. 
I've never, uh, I've never really, you know, it's whatever. Why not? I, yeah. I know what I feel, and that's the way I feel about it, so we'll just go with it and see what happens. I would love to be proved wrong about it. All right, so other things that were really good, though, was the 250 lights racing that happened in Toronto. I was really impressed with that. Bam Bam got the win, but we get to see guys like Blake Warden and a lot of other good riders, Darren Durham, putting down some awesome lap times. Yeah, I think yeah. they did a great job, man. Yeah, I'm I don't really know if excited. you that, uh, you know, that KTM 250. Uh, you of know, Roxon? Of Roxon. You know, the only person to make a pass on on uh, Barsha, you know, right after the start this season. So, you know, if you need an S- uh, SX250, you can come down to SMS Racing. SMS Racing, um, but, Apparently, uh, you got friends. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I don't get a deal, know. but they'll sell you a bike. <laughs> yeah, so... But yeah, that was really cool to see him, somebody challenge Barsha, um, at least a little bit, make it a little bit interesting. You yeah. Know? So and uh, let's talk about uh, Bogle and uh, who's that other fool that crashed themselves out of the. Oh, the he was seat? like, <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like whipped opposite ways. Who was that that he? That was into? I think it was a Canadian dude. Uh, his he had a three digit number. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, he, they literally whipped into each other, and their back ends touched, and so they kind of they and stopped the momentum, and doomed. both of them did went to like death capades. Yeah, just face plant. <laughs> they bogle his face. Yeah. And I, don't like, I don't like about bogles when stuff like that happens. He immediately like he, he needs to calm the frick down because he immediately blames the other person. Like when you like when with Malcolm uh-huh. Stewart, he like slapped him on the head, and then after this, when they had that big wreck, he just gets up and he just looks at the other rider and throws his hands up. Like, dude, you're in a contact and then, and, and, sport. And then he goes and curls up in pain. Right. It's after like, the you're in a sport where rubbing is racing. I mean, like, come on, dude. You know. I, so I think with with Bogle's got some great potential. Rah. He has just got to stop throwing that leg out there because <laughs> I'm just gonna grab it, bite it, and just. Yank, yank it down it. whenever you're yeah. on the apex of the triple. Yeah, there's, 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 there's Woody grabbing both. Like. I'll be like, Wah! I'm riding, baby. Yeah, you know? so good right. good action from from uh, Toronto this week. Got some more racing. It's going to be a good time. We had some work sacks, and we haven't been covering too much stuff lately with all my job changing and trying to move, baby on the way, blah, blah. Yeah, now let's talk about color crap. But we had Works in Lake Havasu. This is always fun because of the fact that it's spring break. Not only is there motorcycle racing going on, but there's crazy women's hanging out in the lake next to it going, what up, check out my jokies. <laughs> like, maybe that's what they're saying. I don't really know. I haven't really paid attention that's to their what, That's what Callie, Callie Lemon says. Yeah. Check out my jokies. Yeah. So apparently he's met, met more California women than I have. But congratulations to Taylor Roberts going 1-1 one, on one the weekend. We got Mike Brown in second and then Kyle Summers in third. They actually, like, that was the whole weekend. First, second, third, Saturday and Sunday. So that was mm-hmm. a good job. Uh, more East Coast, OMA. Round three was in Dawson Springs, Kentucky. Paul Wibley with the win. We got Nick oh, Ferringer yeah. in third, Russell Bobbitt in, uh, I'm sorry, Nick Ferringer in second, and Russell Bobbitt in third. All these guys on, uh, Paul Wibley on a four stroke, but Nick Ferringer and Russell Bobbitt on their two strokes, Hoosterberg for Ferringer and yeah. KTM for yeah. Bobbitt. Um, I think that's good for both of those guys in second and third. <laughs> Wibley's been good. He's, he's been really, yeah, really he's good dominant. in GCCs, but sure. Ferringer and Bobbitt are both coming off injuries from last year. Mm-hmm. And so That's good results for them, yeah, you know, in the, in the mud, so. Yeah. And then National Hair and Hound, the bromancer, Kirk Caselli with the win. Come on, man. Who doesn't love a good Kirk Caselli win? Everybody yeah. loves a good Kirk Caselli win. Dave Camo in second, David Pearson in third. Yeah. I think that's pretty much how it always consistently kind of works out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Kirk Caselli just dropping the hammer right it. now. He just kills it out there, you know. It just, I've seen some of those Desirees and the, the helmet cams, man, and the bomb starts is is you know where most of it comes. You think down you could to. do that? I mean, that's a hundred. That's you're, man. They're booking it. I know. You know, like I love to go fast. You know, Ricky Bobby style, but uh, <laughs> body know, dragon. I'm just going and body dragon. Right? But you know, a mile long straight away. Yeah, count me out, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <What's going laughs> I mean, just think about it. Like you, it's a tri- it's a it's a triangle. I mean, you have a row full of people. That are like, oh look, they're what used to be a smokestack, <laughs> and that is what they head toward, and they're following little ribbons, oh, you know, man, and it just nuts. funnels down into this one little trail that they might know where it goes. Yeah, I mean, just no, yeah, that's another yeah. kind of dust racing there, but yeah. you know, so I'll go to Vegas and throw down, but man, I'm, <laughs> yeah. out, on, I'm, out, I'm out on the desert yeah, racing. There you go. But Boise, Idaho, uh, that is uh, notorious for close to fly racing. And uh, they are a very big sponsor of ours. We want to say thank you to flyracing.com. Uh, or thank you to Fly Racing. Please go check them out, flyracing.com. 
I'm telling you now, you can't look more cool than I do right now, sitting here on this couch enjoying a brewski. The thing is, they're going to support everybody. Hey, you get out oh, of here sorry. with that. <laughs> this, this is our time. <laughs> so, the thing is about fly racing. They will support you if you're a four-wheeler. They will support you if you're a dirt bike rider. They will support you if you are on a freaking uh, snowmobile. They got all these equipments that you need to enjoy being an outdoor nut like us. Uh, they probably won't buy you beer, but they'll support you if you do drink it just like they do. Uh, so flyracing.com. Go check them out. Dale Spangler, you're the man. Hopefully you're having a brew while you're watching this. And if you are, just text me what it is because then I'll go buy it and have one with you. I might get Jordan to buy it because he's probably going to have more money than I am just because I made stupid decisions. Gonna, gonna have. But, don't have. Yeah, don't have lawyer friends. Nothing? That's it? That's Jordan's it. already texting somebody. It doesn't make a difference. Okay. Bring it back into the show. Torn. Round three. Stuff happened. Callisburg, Texas. We have Caleb Ramsey, who got to race this weekend. So, dude, uh, in the most was, energetic uh, way possible, yeah. what happened this weekend? <laughs> oh, man. It was uh, super gnarly. We had a, we had a stacked lineup. Um, I think we got a picture there. Oh, if we can get we're that. We're going to look for it? Where yeah. is it? Yeah. Jordan, could you get that? Yeah. Just bring it on in. Okay. And so, Ooh, super. Pictures. Super big lineup, you know, we had a couple of pro guys come and, and join us. Uh, Trampus Parker, you know, drove out from Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah, Louisiana. Louisiana. <laughs> you know, the ride with us. Um, it was a good time. Uh, I got a pretty decent gate pick, um, you know, right off the start beside Austin Henderson, who nabbed the whole, whole shot. Ooh. I got sandwiched in between him and uh, Cameron Ishmael. Who, so you uh, got you got was a cowie sandwich. Yeah, I'm always riding with those cowie guys, and they like the bump. So Rare. it was a Caleb, Caleb sandwich, um, cowie sandwich. Um, so you know, you know, I, I, I don't want to know about your there. Caleb sandwich, just the cowie sandwich. So gross. Saturday night was so good. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> 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 so you know, coming around the first corner, I was hanging out in third. Uh, third was cool. Uh, tried to pass Cameron, um, you know, in this gnarly ravine, jumped the wall, stuck to the wall, and just, you know, hit my head pretty hard, so I was like, all right, gotta take it past a notch, you know, and our old buddy Cody Beck passed me. So we got is the, the pro class? And, the, and the, this, he made his, uh, pro debut. Oh, ah, Cody yep. Beck! He had been in Europe for about a year, not racing the, the, uh, the GPs. Um, studying in school. Yeah. Mechanical engineer. Whatever, dude. <laughs> yeah. One day he's gonna like have so much money he's gonna be able to take us places. It'll be cool. No, you know, so sponsor me. Yeah. Uh, or just take me out on the evening. <laughs> yeah. So Cody's riding real good. Uh, he stuck a, a rotor in the rut and stalled it and so I had to get around him and, uh, you know, and then I started battling with Austin. We went back and forth. Uh, you know, he had let me by and then uh, we'd come into a part of the track and you know everything you'd be all confused and then i'd pass him and then and so we went back and forth you know a little bit of confusion on the first lap with some reroutes because it's super muddy um but anyways I ended up getting around him and chasing down cameron yeah um riding behind cameron and uh for for a good bit of the first half of the race and just uh just couldn't make it t couldn't make it happen um arms just went to jello so I kind of backed off a little bit. Um, eventually, later on in the race, uh, Cheyenne Harmon caught me. Oh. Yeah, he was riding real well. Rode with him for a while, uh, let him by, and then he crashed in front of me. And then, uh, or, and then later on, um, Cole Kirkpatrick, he he came out to the torn. He he got a bad start. I heard that he had a bad start. Yeah, yeah, he oh, was making his way through the start, and uh, him and Cameron were like, "Oh, look at us, we're cool. We can jump this creek." Um, and just ate it, uh, I think two laps ago, maybe. Yeah, I think he said he cased it, like, third gear wide open. Oh, yeah, I mean. 40 miles an hour to zero. It looked like he could jump the water, but the bank on the other side was the problem, you know? So you could clear the water, but just, you know, went into that bank, it unloaded them, and, and uh, yard sale. And so he was posted. What's that pictures of that? Oh, I know. Well, I mean, I still have a picture of my head. It's like, don't go that way on the trail. Go that way. And there's a crowd of people around him because I guess it was pretty gnarly that you know grew some attention because there's a lot of spectators there. So, anyways, he he passed me and was in the lead, you know, and just tossed it away. Um, so what a Cam goon. so Cameron and I went one two, and uh, Cheyenne brought up third, and I, I believe Austin got fourth. Um, so it was a real fun track, a uh, super primo, super tacky. How was it? Uh, how was the layout compared to the Toro? It was, 
It was um, tighter than the Toro. Really? It was actually a lot of new trail. And uh, uh, the problem with running a torn track in tight trees in the mud is that there would be a gr- there's a, typically a goon right really close to the trees. Ah. So you can't like lean it over. You have to go up real close. And as you can tell, I had some problems from some trees and busted my knuckles. So. You guys getting mad at those things. It's like Rocky Balboa. Like, but yeah, and like, there's just like this one right-hander in every lap, dude. Every lap. I knew it was coming. There's like nothing I could do. It just, pow, and would just open up my hand a little bit more. Yes. <laughs> He's into that kind of thing. Folks, what can you say? Yeah, I just, you know, take a cheese grater to the knuckles. and. But no, it was a great weekend, though. Um, So I ended up second, and uh. Uh, Cameron, you know, took the win. Um, so it was it was a great weekend. We had a uh, had a lot of fun. I like it. Fun. So we talked about Cole Kirkpatrick and his uh, bailout on Saturday, his yard sale. Well, he yeah, actually went to the ER, got an X ray, and the the he pretty much his decision was like, if they tell me that nothing's broken, I'm gonna go race Concho. So that's what he did. He actually asked the the nurse or the doctor if he could go race, and they're like, absolutely not. And he was like, well, I'm pretty much going to go as long as nothing's broken. She's like, well, nothing's broken. He's like, all right. So since his bike was so wadded up, he borrowed his brother's 450 that he hadn't ridden in who knows how long and went and raced that out of Concho. He said that he stalled it a bunch of times, but that his brother Cameron riding his, that Cameron riding his 250 um, was, was actually winning. Uh, majority of the race, but he wound up checking in two minutes late to one of the check-ins at the Concho Enduro, and that's what cost oh, him the overall. Um, that would have uh, been good Cameron for him. Cameron would have overalled over his brother Cole Kirkpatrick, and I think that would have been phenomenal. Cameron has mm-hmm. been doing a great job at a lot of the torch races he's been going to, and at a lot of the T-Secs, you know, being able to uh, surpass Hayden Franklin, the seven-time uh, T-Sec Enduro champion. That says a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's so, railing lately, you know. Yeah. He's been railing. So and he did really good, good in Toro, and he's been, you know, he's been to a couple torn TCSRAs and stuff. So I mean, watch out because Cameron Kirkpatrick seems to be taking over the reins from his younger from his older brother. So maybe they're gonna fight each other out. I don't know. It'd be awesome if they both made it to a GNCC and they could be like, uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that'd be tight. Know, be tight. So, so congratulations, uh, Cole Kirkpatrick gets the win at uh, gets the the Concho. fifty the forty four millimeter back. It's a big gun trophy. If I can find the picture, I'm gonna put it here. If I can't, you get to look at me for about three seconds doing this. There you go. All right. Uh, Hayden Franklin in second and Cameron Kirkpatrick in third. Great job for all those guys on uh, that there enduro. One of the things that we wanted to talk about was uh, Torx as well. Josh Young got another win with Brad Uh, Kramer, right, coming in second? Yeah, Brad Kramer uh, was pressuring him all weekend. Um, But... uh, Josh made it happen, so that was, that's good for him. That's what you so, do. It's what you gotta do. You gotta make stuff happen. And then the Mid East uh, hair scrambles, the racing that went on there in North Carolina. Charlie Mullins coming away with a really muddy win over Stuart Baylor mm-hmm. and Jesse Robinson, mm-hmm. second and third respectively. Yeah. Um, I think KTM was pretty happy with that podium. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. I'm <laughs> covering all three, so you know that that's great for the uh, Stuart Baylor. You know he's really been uh, getting some. Impressive results, you know, when it's a couple of national enduros and. Uh, okay, so here's here's sport. my question. What's that? Charlie Mullins got this win, and he got uh, a podium at uh, the GNCCs, mm-hmm. and he's also he but he did that after getting back on the 450 carbureted bike when he was on the dungy bike. We're just gonna call it that the EFI yeah. dungy bike. He had mechanicals in all the races. Oof. Yeah. I mean, bad luck or is that bike just not off road yeah. developed yet? You know that that's that's so hard to say. That's kind of that's kind of odd for him to have uh to have problems with Dungey not having any. You know, right. um, there's but, a lot more circumstances. I mean, it's like you know, closed course versus an open course kind of. Yeah. Yeah, you know, well, there's, there's a lot more. A lot more mud. You're lot throwing more rocks, water but, at it. Yeah, you're throwing rocks at it. Um, you know, and so that, you know, that's, you know, maybe, maybe it was some off-road related problems, you know, there's, there's no telling. So, yeah. you know, but it, it's not surprising that he goes back to what's familiar because anytime you got a brand new motorcycle, there's a extensive testing, you know, and they got to figure out what all is going to Off-road gonna development, folks. R&R, yeah. It's like, uh, it's like a, it's like Friday night, man. Meet somebody. We might want to just go out with them again Saturday night just to make sure they're not cray cray. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> next next year Do will be your the, research. <laughs> next year will be the true yeah. guest testing period. I definitely <laughs> think, and I, I by no means am trying to harp on it. It's just that I think it's 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 an interesting situation. You know that Charlie Mullins was coming in, the uh, defending enduro champion. He's had so much problems in those in all the early early rounds of the enduro mm-hmm. series yeah. on the new four fifty. Uh, he gets off of it and and has immaculate. You yeah. know, could things completely turn around. Mainly because he didn't have mechanicals. Yeah. But it could be circumstantial, honestly, at this point. Who really knows? They might get it figured out. They might not. He might stay on a carbureted bike. Yeah. I don't know. Cecil Parker did it. What's up? (laughs) I mean, if Cecil Parker does it, you got to do it. Yeah, you know. Right? Of course. (laughs) Mm -mm. Mm. I spilled beer on myself. Cecil Parker would have done that. Um, Okay, so what's new for you? What's next? Um, It's not in there. No, what's next for you? What's coming up in your life? Oh, what's coming up in my life? Oh, well, you know, I just started at SMS Racing three Ooh. weeks ago, so I'm slinging parts, so if you need any parts or accessories for your orange motorcycle, come see me or Josh Wozner at smsracing.net. So, other than that, man... You want racing? Oh, just uh, got TCCRA coming up this weekend. Uh, <laughs> Still trying to trying to get the get get trying to get the points back, you know. I'm a little bit behind. Get the number one. Yeah, that's that's the plan. Try to get the plate back. So there's some pretty good competition, been some pretty good racing going on, but yeah, tra- kind of. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, but I've uh, been training hard, um, and riding harder. You were on your road bike today, huh? Yeah, yeah. First ride on that. Little shout out to Tony Cherry Holmes for hooking me up with the carbon fiber frame, and I've Ooh. been. Take me a little time, but I finally got it built and finally went on a good ride today. So. Do you uh do you wear full uh, spandex when you ride? Um yeah, but I try not to tell anybody. I wear them under my athletic shorts, so I don't. I'm not gangster and have the leotard, you know. The, the bib. The bib, yeah. I'm not. I do. I'm not aerodynamic enough. I do. Um, someday. I totally do. You do. Yeah. Is it like the one piece where it's like has the straps and then the jersey goes yep. over? That's it's called a bib. It's called a bib. It's called a bib. It oh. Looks awesome. <laughs> I bet. I was gonna say awful. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, because you automatically get moose knuckle because you're wearing a chamois in that thing. It's yeah. Like, so I mean, but it's for what it is. It's extremely comfortable. Pack it. So, you know. Yeah. Just make it look better than it really is. Right. No, I'm not. I'm not it's toy. Fast toy like enough. a toy guy. I'm not fast enough for it yet. Uh, you know, I rock a regular T-shirt and, uh, you know. Tell me you wear a helmet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, there's too many cars around and whatnot. You got to be safe about it. You have your reflectors and, you know. Oh, well, <laughs> oh, well you know. But, but yeah. <laughs> this you is know. my reflector. Shut up, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? They, they back off. Yeah. They but. back off. <laughs> Just punk face. Yeah, they see me and that liker coming after them. They're freaked out, man. <laughs> they don't want none of this. So, but no, you know, just uh, you know, do a little bicycling, do a little running, and uh, do a whole lot of racing. Yeah, do some work now. Yeah, doing some looking good too. All right, well, cool. We got uh, we appreciate you, Caleb Ramsey, for coming on seat time. High five! It's over here. Yep. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Loving it. Deuce, deuce in his life away. This is a good time. Oh, Melanie Dean. Hi. Uh, just throwing it out there. All right, guys. So we've got TCCRA coming up this weekend. Let's see if I can make it out there. Do some night racing. I think that'd be fun. Cecil Parker would make fun of me, but it happens. Shut up. Get out of here with that. Aww. Oh, it's okay. I didn't break the folk. There's carpet down there. We can't uh, throw our guests' phones. Yeah, we can. <laughs> Dude, on. it's cool. It's Nobody's cool. gonna want to come on the show. Throwing <laughs> people's cell phones, spitting beer everywhere, and throwing people's cell phones. They should just. Come prepared. Stay back. Yeah. Stay back and be ready. Just be ready for a good time. That's all that's going to happen. Episode 53, folks. Old school. We're going to bring the notes back eventually. I might get another iPad. I might not. I don't know. This things cost money. Man, yeah. Man. I would say old school. It's paper. Yeah, you know the paper kids. Make it all right. rain. Seatime.co is where you can find our URL and all the episodes where they live on the internet. And Facebook.com slash Seatime is where we're at on Facebook. And then as well, we're at Seatime underscore CO. If you happen to tweet on the Twitter, we're awesome. Or where are you? Are you <sighs> anywhere? Yeah, I'm, a, I'm pretty awesome. I'm not a whole pint full, maybe a liter. Whoa. Yeah, so wait, is that like the same Yeah, sense? I think a liter is actually more than a pint. Dang it. <laughs> okay, but I'm there. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? You're yeah, there? Yeah. All right, he's there, folks. Find him at your own will. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> 
Thanks for paying attention. Always enjoy a pipe full of awesome. I'm going to just drink this slowly so that it makes it look like I'm having a good time and now I'm getting drunk. Bye. Backwards, Bob.